Welcome to Beyond Film School, where I teach you all about the film industry, and I am Amber, and I am here today to talk about film boundaries. And the reason why I chose this topic is I feel like it is a recurring theme in a lot of the conversations that I've been having lately with like people in the industry that I work with, film friends of mine, people I've had chats with, and I, I feel like it's a huge issue. Film boundaries are like a huge, huge issue. And what do I mean by film boundaries? I'm talking about like the internal boundaries that you have with yourself, the boundaries that you, you know, you set for yourself when you're working with other people, you know, physical boundaries, limitations, all the stuff <laughs> inside and out, around you, inside, emotionally, all the things. People like to have, and I just talked about this, I just had a, um, a staff PA meeting since we're starting our shoot tomorrow. I had a meeting with all the PAs and I don't, one of the things I said to them was, I don't have the expectation of you to be working when you're not on, right? So for example, if they're starting at 10 a.m., I'm not gonna bother them. I'm not gonna expect them to be on their walkie. I'm not gonna force them to be 10 minutes early, 15 minutes early. Well, you know, my mindset is like that because I was a PA. I used to get paid $10, $11, $12, whatever it was, $15 an hour now, more recently, in the last few years, $15 an hour. Now, because I get paid peanuts as a PA, well, I'm not, I mean, I'm in the DGA now, which is like, <laughs> bless, <laughs> bless. I have been blessed with getting into the DGA and I've worked hard to get there. But man, being a PA is definitely a struggle, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. Those of you who have been PAs out there, you're getting paid minimum wage and it's very, very hard. So how dare I? How dare I, as like your leader or your boss or your AD or whatever, to expect you to be working when you're not being paid, right? I am not in the mindset of trying to make sh like trying to make you work when you're not being paid, especially because you're hourly, right? ADs, we're paid daily. So most people are paid on a daily rate. A lot of people are paid on a daily rate. So it literally doesn't matter if I'm there early or uh, they're late. Like I'm still getting paid the same right? But for PAs, you are paid hourly. So I never expect anyone to go above and beyond and being like, I want you there 15 minutes early because that's a mindset. That's an, I want to say it's an old school mindset. And I know, I know, I know, I know a lot of people out there will debate me on this. <laughs> I know for a fact, I will die on that hill. I am sorry. PAs do not get paid enough to be there 15 minutes early, because if you add that up, 15 minutes early every day, that's adding up to like at least an hour and a half by the end of the week, right? 15 minutes, like uh, you're an hour and 15 minutes by the time you get to Friday. And then people are like, no, 15, 20 minutes early. Well, then now we're going into an hour that you weren't paid for. And yes, we're talking about that's an extra $15 in your check. But when you're getting paid peanuts, all those small pennies add up. And I swear to you, I stand by this. And just the other day, I'm talking to my first AD because I'm second second on this movie that I'm on. And I, I was trying to get like a, a cool like TikTok video from him, but he like couldn't think on the fly. It was really funny. But I asked him, I was like, what are some of the things that you expect from your PAs? Like, what are your expectations? And one of the things he was like, I want them early. I want them 15 minutes early. I, I really do a good like impression of my first AD. <laughs> but I was like, uh-huh. Yeah, sure, because I don't believe in that. I do not believe in in working when you're not getting paid for it. Uh, and as a PA, I did not work before my call. Did not. You're not going to get extra work out of me. You're not going to abuse me. And I set that boundary for myself. You're going to get upset with me that I'm not there early. I'm sorry, what is my call time? If you want me there 15 minutes early, make my call time 15 minutes early. Excuse me. <laughs> I am starting a movement and I don't care. I told all my PAs on my staff meeting today, I said, I don't expect that from you. But what I will tell you is that other ADs might expect that from you, but I will not be bothering you before your call time. I will not. Will not point blank period. And a lot of people, I feel like they are forced into that mindset of, I have to be early. I have to go in and put in more. But if you think about it, if you keep giving more and more and more, people, it's like a slippery slope and people will take advantage of it and they'll try and get more and more out of you. So you have to set those boundaries where you're like, no, this is my call time. That's what it is. That's what you get. And if you want more, then you got to pay. <laughs> you have to pay. 
And a lot of people, I don't know how you folks feel out there, because there is a risk, right? There, I just had a conversation with a friend of mine last night about how her AD was like, yo, why are you not here early? And she's like, excuse me, like I'm, my call time is this. And she actually is brave enough to stand up for herself, whereas other people are not. And I know there's so many people out there who actually have such a hard time with saying no to people with saying, I'm not doing that, or I'm not in yet. I will definitely 100% tell all the people that, oh wait, I'm not, I'm not in yet. And they're like, oh, okay. But also I'm a bit more confident, a bit more outspoken, and some people tend not to question me as some other people, because it's all about the persona you're putting on, and the confidence you have, and the self-esteem that you have when you're setting those boundaries for yourself. So, and I think it's all encompassing, but as soon as you realize your worth and you don't let people take advantage of you and you're like, no, <laughs> and I'm going to get into my, my, my secret sauce a little bit later to like try and combat all this stuff. But the boundaries you set for yourself are super, super important because people will take what they can. They will always take what they can from others, always, no matter what, and especially in film because we don't have a lot of time, we got a lot to shoot, and we don't have a lot of money. <laughs> Those three things, like we don't have a lot of time, sun's going down, we don't have the money to do what we wanna do, so it's always what can we do to get the most out of the crew for the least amount of money and the least amount of time. And it's always going to be that battle, no matter what, because I feel like, and even with producers, if, you, if I flip it, and I think about the producer side of it, where it's like, well, yes, I want them there 15 minutes early because then I'm getting 15 minutes of free work from that person and they're prepared and maybe it runs more smoothly or whatever, right? That's one hour they don't have to pay throughout the week and times that by like, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 PAs, that adds up, right? That's like $150 at the end of the week. That's like um, $500 by the end of the month, if you think about it. So like these nickel and diming type tactics is it's definitely a thing and when you think about your bottom line how much money do you have to make a movie all of it adds up so I get it from the producer end I definitely get it from the producer end but also the producer is setting his own boundaries the people who are running the show have their boundaries so therefore you need to have your boundaries and this is why unions and all that shit exists in the in the film world that's exactly why those things exist it's going to be an ongoing push and pull struggle of like Whose boundaries, what limits do we have to follow? What boundaries do we have to kind of, you know, uh, grant access to or, or surpass? Like, what are you willing to give me for this? What am I willing to give you for that? And it's always gonna be this push and pull with them. So you as a person who is working on a set, you have to set your own boundaries and be, have like a, I don't wanna say like come to Jesus moment, but you have to have a moment with yourself and, and be like, do, am I willing to keep doing this? Am I willing to keep giving my all? Am I willing to kill myself over that? Over, you know, whatever you're working on. So I talked about time. Your time as a boundary is definitely a thing. I fully support people who are, they, they don't wanna be talked to until they're in, no problem. I got you, no problem. Time is a thing. The other thing is gonna be responsibilities. When you're in the world of film and we are, we don't have a lot of time, we don't have enough crew, because I feel like you never have enough crew, there are gonna be moments where someone's gonna ask you to do something that isn't really in your job description. And I know that there are a lot of people out there, myself not included, who are people pleasers. They wanna do everything they can to, and this comes down to a validation issue and self-worth and self-esteem. They just want to please people around them to get that validation that they are good enough. And that's definitely like, that's a deep-seated internal thing that makes people want to be people pleasers. So, and this does happen in film. I mean, I feel like film is a world filled with very eccentric, very interesting, very unique types of people. And I feel like we're all the mis misfits of the world just like all on set together. That's what I think of it. Cause I'm a very strange cat. I'm gonna let you know. Some people, are, they got weird quirks and I, I love all the different types of people I meet on set. And we're all, we all got issues. I feel like we've all come together and gravitated toward this world for some reason. We're all very unique, I think. And we all got some issues, y'all. <laughs> We all got some issues and when you combine that with the stress levels and the rushing and the 
all the things that go into filmmaking, it just makes it magnified, whatever your problems are. So if I have an anger issue and when, when the stress of film, and I'm speaking about an anger issue because I do have anger issues and I thank God I haven't been angry in a long time. I'm in such a good place right now. But before, when I had anger issues, that would just magnify every time I was stressed out on set. Like I would just get so angry if things didn't work out or someone was a dick to me or whatever. Like and the first thing you should do, just know that you should not take anything personal because that's how you deal with a lot of the stress. People get stressed out because they're taking things personal. And with that exchange where that writer said to the first, like, oh, why didn't you tell me? Like, first of all, who are you talking to like that? First of all. <laughs> like, second of all, that is a courtesy. Third of all, I've been spoiling you. And now that I've taken back and just gone to regular responsibilities, you think I'm not doing my job, which is like completely false. So there's a lot to be said about when you go above and beyond and you're spoiling the people around you and you're doing more and more and more and more, they expect more and more and more, right? So think about the things that you're doing that are going to cause people to think like, oh, well, this person did that for me. So I'm going to assume the when they're on to another show that whatever position that is, like, oh, well, this first AD did this, but why are you not doing this? Because that first AD did it for me and you're not doing it for me. You know, you go above and beyond for these actors when you're a first team PA. You go above and beyond for the director and for, you know, your first or your second, second AD. And you're like, wait, but I'm killing myself for what? That's not even part of my job. So making sure that you know what your responsibilities are and not to say, because a lot of people do want to do a little extra because that's how they keep getting, you know, called back. And, you know, that's how they keep getting more and more jobs. And I've kind of find it a struggle myself because as a second second, I feel like the people who are my bosses, the key second and the first AD, they know that I'm gonna do a lot. They know that I'm gonna hold a lot of the weight when it comes to the PAs, or they know that I'm gonna have those conversations. I'm gonna have those tough um, conversations with some people or those confrontations. Like I'm ready for a confrontation. I will tell you that. When I'm on set, I am ready for you to yell in my face. I am ready for that conflict because if I have no fear, you wanna scream at me, please go ahead. Please go ahead, because I am ready to go. <laughs> I am ready <laughs> to be like, excuse me, why are you so upset? <laughs> but I know that people like to work with me because I do go a little extra. But I also, if I know I'm being spread too thin, I will say my piece and be like, hey, you guys gotta pull your weight now. If it's too much for me, like, no way. Like we're a team and I'm not holding this up on my own. And that's something that people who are like really hard workers and they want the validation and there are people pleasers, they have, that's a struggle for them. Making sure you know your boundaries and you know your limits to the responsibilities that you are fulfilling when you're working on set. Other thing I wanna talk about is gonna be safety, like the boundaries and safety. Some people like to really, they, I don't, I don't understand why it is, I don't, is it expected or they think they can get away with certain things? They like to bend the rules when it comes to safety. And this really is something that bothers me and I have no qualms. I have no problem being, you know, very outspoken and being like, that needs to be reevaluated. We have to do this in a safe way. This is unsafe, you know, whatever the case may be. I have no problems doing this at all. And some people are like, they're so afraid of confrontation that they don't want to say no. And I think that is interesting because there's, I'm ready for confrontation, right? And because I'm ready for you to scream at me, for you to yell at me for, for that fight, they know that I'm going to fight back. Therefore it happens less to me. Does that make sense to everybody? Cause I feel like a lot of people don't get it. If I don't care that you're about to yell at me, people don't yell at me. And not being afraid of confrontation, not being afraid to say no, especially when it comes to safety, there's gotta be someone who, who like kind of stands up and says, what the fuck? Like, this is not, you know, and some people are definitely afraid to say something. They're afraid to stand up for themselves. But also I feel like a lot of people, they will tend to stand up for others before they stand up for themselves. So if you could turn it around, even this like cool little mental game that you play with yourself, and sometimes it's worse with me. Like, and the, a funny example is like, I'm gluten-free, I have celiac disease, so 
when I go to a restaurant, I tend not to bring up that I am, you know, I'm, I'm celiac, whatever. I'll just ask like certain questions like, does this have bread, da, 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 da. And then I'm like very subtle about it. Whereas like my friends are like, no, but she's gluten-free, she's celiac, so she needs this and this. Like they'll stand up for me before I'm like very outspoken. Because for me, I feel like because I have certain dietary restrictions, that it's, I'm a more difficult customer, therefore I don't wanna be rude, right? So, <laughs> but my friends on the other hand, they're like, no, they have no bones about like being super outspoken about it. So when you can turn it around in your mind and you can, you can make it seem like you are standing up for someone else, it's easier to do. So, but you're standing up for someone else, especially when it comes to safety. If it comes to safety, it's not just about someone else, it's about you too. Right, so if you find things that are unsafe, like, oh shit, I'm kind of scared in this situation. If you say something, guarantee there are other people on set who are like, this is kind of like, this is not, this is not safe, this is shysty as fuck. <laughs> like there are other people who are going to be thinking that. And a lot of times, a lot of people think that they are alone in the feelings that they're feeling or the, if they're afraid of something. When there are, if you are thinking a certain thing or feeling a certain thing, guaranteed in a room of 20 people, there's gonna be at least two other people who feel the exact same way, 100%. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna talk about as far as safety is concerned is gonna be sleep. We all work so many hours and I understand that you may not be able to fit in all the sleep you need, all the nutritional eating you need, exercise, and then work like a 12, 15, 20 hour day or whatever and then get enough sleep. It's like almost impossible. I get it. So it is very, very important that you are not pushing the boundaries of your body and mind. And I say mind because when you are not getting enough sleep, your cognitive function is like drastically, like drastically affected in it. Like you will not be working at 100% if you got three hours sleep. And I've done this many times. And, and, and it happens to me a lot when I've had a string of days off because my natural sleep rhythm is I like to go to bed at two and wake up at 10. There's like certain people circuit uh certain pockets where it's like some people are like early to bed early rise where they they go to bed at 10 and they like wake up at 6 a.m and then there's other ones that they go to bed at like 11 and they wake up at 7 or something like that and then like there's another pocket of like people who who like go to bed at 2 and wake up at 10 where there's like these weird these weird things where my natural habit is like going to bed at 2 waking up at 10 it's like the best if i just were to just live my life no film, work, whatever involved, that's my natural sleep rhythm. So knowing your natural sleep rhythm is like, first of all, half the battle. But then what happens is, is that if I wake up too late on Sunday, trying to go to bed <laughs> Sunday night, waking up early as hell <laughs> on Monday morning. So for example, tomorrow my call time is 6.30 and we're in Brooklyn. So like I'm gonna be driving into Brooklyn from New Jersey at least probably 45 minutes, maybe more than that, maybe because it's er so early in the morning that I feel like I might not hit traffic, thankfully. But I always end up Sunday into Monday getting the least amount of sleep because I just can't fall asleep because of my natural rhythm. So it happens, I understand. Getting enough sleep is super important though. And like I said, like falling asleep when you're driving, like there have been multiple people who have died because they did not have enough sleep because they are pushing their bodies to the limit and they think they can get home. And most accidents that are involved with falling asleep at the wheel happen like five minutes before they even get home. Like it's always like within a mile of the person's home. And it's so sad. It's like they almost made it. And I myself have had definitely some tough nights driving from Brooklyn, going into New Jersey, and it's like two in the morning. I've worked 16, 17 hours, and like I'm in my township, and I'm like, oh my God, I just need like one more to warm up to get home. And then it's it's kind of, it's really, when you're reaching that point, you're like, oh my God, like it's hard. And another thing is to keep in mind is like once you start reaching 17 hours of just being awake, that's when you start getting into uh, the like mental state of being intoxicated. It's like the equivalent of being intoxicated. So your brain is starting to look like that of a person who has been drinking. So when you're like mixing that with driving, it's super unsafe. So it's 
it should be that you're making sleep a priority. And it's all very hard. It's all very challenging. And it takes a lot of discipline, 100%. Like for me, I didn't want to wake up early this morning, but I definitely had to wake up early this morning because if I did not wake up early this morning, I would be going to bed super late tonight and getting three hours of sleep on the first day of production tomorrow. And I do not want to be cognitively uh, less than <laughs> for tomorrow, especially starting a new job and like having a, a, a first idea that's like not my normal first. So I'm like, I got to bring my A game. We got to bring it <laughs> on the first day. So you definitely do not want to push your cognitive boundaries like 100%. Like sleep is super important. And I actually was listening to a podcast about sleep. And it is true. There are so many things in the U.S. right now where people are like, oh, well, I'll sleep when I'm dead. And they see sleep as a chore. And if we could just change our mindset <laughs> that sleep is just precious and it's what gets you like to the to the next day and it's like you enjoy sleeping. Some people enjoy sleeping. Some people do. For me, I have had this problem all the time. I used to hate used to hate going to bed as a child. Like my mom made me go to bed at like 8, 8, or 8 p.m. every day for like, I don't know, for like 10 years. <laughs> like, she made me go to bed and I used to hate it because I, feel, I felt like I was missing out on certain things. Like I remember specifically in the summertime when in Buffalo, the, the sun is like out forever and it'd be like, like eight and it's totally bright outside <laughs> in, the, in the middle of summer and I'm like, forced to go to bed because that was my bedtime. I used to hate going to bed. And I still have this as an adult where I'm like, I don't wanna go to bed, I wanna stay up, I wanna like live my life. But also I'm like, yeah, but sleep is great at the same time. So I totally get that. I totally get how some people are just not, they're just not about it. But also like you can't be your best self, you can't be your best mental self, you can't be your best emotional self if you are not like properly rested. Like you're not gonna be your self. Cause some people, and that's why, when you work in film, everyone is like, they have, it's like tensions are high, everyone's irritable or angry or like impatient. It's because everyone's sleep deprived. <laughs> if everyone just got more sleep, everyone would be a little bit happier on set. Guaranteed, like 100% guaranteed. That is, I don't doubt that for a second. <laughs> I wanna get to respect before I get to my secret sauce. I wanna get to respect for a little bit because I, think that a lot of people think they have to tolerate when people are assholes to them or they're disrespecting them or they're like just overall just not pleasant to work with and utterly disrespectful. And I feel like it's not a gender thing because women are treated horrible, guys are treated horrible. It just happens. People are fucking assholes. Doesn't, it doesn't even, you can be, whatever gender you want. And, and some people like to make the claim that women get the brunt of this, which I think is not the case because I've seen, and I just saw it the other day on my camera test. Oh my goodness, I did. And I could not believe this guy was like screaming at his camera loader like this. He was like, I don't understand. Well, I can't make myself any clearer. I'm like, literally you weren't saying anything. So like, that's why he didn't understand you because you didn't say things that you thought you said to be clear. Like some people are just like, hold, wait, hold the, up like where wait, wait me because I am very much like who the fuck are you talking to like I'm just like I give them a look like I know you're not talking to me like that and I've definitely did it I've did it to I mean maybe this just is my rebellion and my overall I know I have to have respect for myself so I do have respect for myself and when you have respect for yourself you don't let others disrespect you right so it was kind of interesting I was walking an actor to set. We were in the city. We were in, I believe, the Upper West Side. And base camp was a few blocks away from set. It took longer to take a van ride. So that's why we walked. It was like three blocks away. And they kept screaming for first team. I was like, we are walking. We are walking. I'm not going to make them. Actors don't run, y'all. They walk at their own pace. So I would say, we're walking. And they're like, how about now? Where are you now? I was like, we're at the next corner. We're at this street. So then the director gets on the walkie and starts screaming at me because he thinks that I'm the PA. So as soon as I say, I'm sorry, who are you yelling at? And it's the director yelling at me. And I did not care. I was like, I'm sorry, we are walking and he is, we are waiting at a, a light and we are not crossing the street until, I don't know, traffic's not coming down. So it's, I took a risk, but also when he realized it was me, like he apologized. 
But if it was a PA, he was okay with like yelling at this PA. It's kind of that type of shit really bothers me when people are like, ready and willing to yell at people who are like on the lower ranks or at the bottom of like the hierarchy or whatever and that really pisses me off I'm sorry like because you thought I was a PA you were gonna totally yell at me on the walkie but then when you found out it was me you're like oh wait I'm so sorry well why would you talk to anybody that way what is wrong with you I don't give I don't give a shit if you're the creator of the fucking moon (laughs) I don't care like why are you talking to me that way and I think that a lot of people think they have to take that shit because their job is on the line or they're afraid to make waves. Well, I'm sorry, but like when someone is rude to me, I let them know right away that it doesn't phase me. And as soon as they realize it doesn't phase me, their actions toward me are like 100% of the time, it's gonna be different. I'm like, okay, great. So can we like move on with whatever we have to move on like without you screaming and yelling at me? Like, cause that's not gonna work. Like I, I, like I will give it right back. And I think a lot of people like, they think they have to take it. Because they're gonna like, well, I don't, I didn't want them to think I was this way. Well, if they're that way, why can't you be that way? Like, and there are some people who are just out, just, just rude. I have no idea why. Like, especially like they're rude to background or they're rude to like PAs too. And I'm like, I just told, told this to my, my PAs. I told them, I was like, I don't care who's on set. Like, I got your back, but if I see that you guys are disrespecting background, like, they're one of us. They're a part of this team. Like, they're, I love background. I love having fun. I love, love setting background. I love having a good day. And I told them, my goal at the end of the day when I'm working with background is I want them to walk away. We had fun on set. You guys were a really great team. I felt really respected. And I've gotten this multiple times in a lot of jobs. And that is my goal. And as long as my PAs know that, that I will not tolerate them treating background like they're beneath them. And even I know, I know that background, we got some interesting characters (laughs) in the background world. I get that. Some of them are a little, you know, require a little more attention or a little more direction. And sometimes they, you know, but we're all human as far as I'm concerned. So every last person on my set that I work, I try to make sure that everyone knows that the respect will be given to you. So if, I think if you establish that line in when you're in a leadership role, it, it spreads, right? That mindset spreads throughout the whole production. But when you're at the top and when you're a creator or a director or your first AD or your director of photography, you're at the top of the ranks and you are affecting a lot of people below you and you are like deeply in, in like influencing all the folks that are like working below you in the hierarchy then if you're gonna be a dick at the top, everyone below you tends to pick up on that attitude. My secret sauce, the most powerful state that you can be in when you're setting boundaries for yourself, when you're you know, speaking up for yourself, speaking up for others, is being willing to walk away. When you do not care about the job, whether it's there or not, like you love what you do, Right, so I'm not talking about like not caring about what you do, you love what you do, but if you are willing to walk away to respect yourself, that is so powerful. You can just be like, okay, you're gonna treat me like this, I have, fire me. If if I speak up for myself, please fire me, please. Because I don't wanna work for you anyways. And when you are in that state of being like, I don't care, like, please fire me. <laughs> like, as soon as you just let that go and you're like, because some people get that anxiety of, but I don't want to lose my job. Let that go. As soon as you let that go, so powerful for you. Because as soon as you have that mindset of like, I have nothing to fucking lose, nothing can phase you. Like, nothing can phase you. And some some people have that high anxiety where like, oh my God. Uh-huh. But like, when, when you have that high anxiety and you feel desperate and you have that anxiety about losing your job, people can feel that around you. And your boss is for that. Uh, they definitely 100% will feel that too. So they know they have the edge. And some bosses and some leaders like to lead with fear to make sure like, just so you know, like I can fire you at any moment. I've had producers who ran sets like that where she told the whole entire crew that they were replaceable. And I was like, who the fuck? Bitch, fire me right now. I would glad to see who you find to replace me in the middle of production in Long Island in the summertime. Like, please. Like, get real, you know? So as soon as you have that mindset of like, I have nothing to lose, I do not need this job. It is super, super powerful. For every, like, that is honestly the secret sauce about keeping your boundaries. Because when a perfect scenario is like someone was talking to me the other day, a friend of mine wanted me to, t- to talk to uh, a friend of theirs and we connected and I was like, yeah, happy to like, get, you know, 
hire you as an additional AD. You know, this is kind of like maybe an interview, got to know her or whatever. And she told me about an instance where she was background PA and the background runner was like, just utterly like rude to her. And she was like, well, I didn't want to really say anything. I felt like I couldn't stand up for myself. He was like, just mean to me and rude. And, and I'm like, no, like I will most definitely like call this person out. Like, I don't know who you think you are. But this is not going to work. If you want, I'm like, I'm here to work for you. I'm here to like support the team. Like whatever you need me to do, I'm, I'm willing to do it. But you will not talk to me that way. And if we can like reset really quick, like I come like real aggressive sometimes because if they're going to be aggressive with me, I mirror, I mirror whatever they're doing to me and I give it right back to them. And as soon as you start doing it, doing that, like that shit gets calm real quick where you're like, you start to like mirror their actions. So a lot of people like think they can't because they're they're like she's like I just want I didn't want to be fired. I'm like why did you want to stay there? <laughs> why did you even want to stay there? I would have been like I'm not I would have went to my second idea like yo, homeboy's an asshole. I will not work with someone like that. So like I'm going to go home. And I so and you still get paid for the day cuz you're on the PR. You were there. Like if, if that's a bridge you want to burn, like why do you want to work for those people anyways? If they're willing to tolerate someone like that on their team, I don't want to work for that team anymore. So like deuces. Like it, bye. <laughs> like, I just want to empower people to be like, you can walk away, you will find another job and you will find people you want to work with. Like 100%. Asserting yourself in front of authority, that takes courage. It does, it takes a lot of courage. But you know what? It takes a lot of courage. But here's the thing is that, for example, the, the woman I was talking to about how she was treated rudely by her background runner. And she just took it right? And she just like, let that person treat them that way. There is a moment for me, at least where I'm like, I should have said this. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna say this, you know, like you're like, I should have done X, Y, Z. And I know everyone has these moments where they've replayed the scenario in their head. I have done everything in my power as a person living my life now to make sure I don't have those regrets of, I should have said this. And I want my integrity intact. I want to keep it intact. I want to respect myself enough. I want to have some integrity and like make sure that I will not stand for that. So I think it does take courage. But on the other side of that, like there's a little bit of guilt on the other side. If you don't stand up for yourself, like why didn't I do that? And then you start beating yourself up a little bit. And then like the self-hate starts coming around. So it's all a lot. It's really complicated when you think about it. It's a lot. It takes courage, but also like, if I don't do it, no one else is gonna stand up for you if you don't stand up for yourself. Don't have someone walk all over you. Cause as soon as you, as soon as people, it's like weird. Like, you know how people can smell desperation on somebody? They can smell all types of things that you're willing to like go through. Like if you don't respect yourself, I can Im- immediately f- like pick out who has self-esteem issues, who's insecure about what. I can I can see it on your face and so can everybody else, right? So like when people sense that stuff, and especially people who are narcissists and people who are master manipulators and people who are the types of people who prey on weaker types of people, weaker types of people I use very loosely. I mean, weaker as in like, you're willing to show your insecurities and you're like, you don't have that, that facade. Like one of my, one of my like biggest issues is like, I am seen as so strong, but also like my weakness is not not being able to show vulnerability to people when I'm like leading a team. Whereas I want them to know I'm human, which is actually hard for me to actually do. So people like have to have their own issues. So when I say like weaker, weaker type, weaker type of people, it's like I use that very loosely, but they like to take advantage of people's insecurities and self-esteem issues. So like that they like to pounce on them because they just want the upper hand. They want the power. They want to step on you. So it's like, and people who I I don't like to use that whole victim mentality, but some people are like, they're a little bit smaller in stature. They have like the way they're holding themselves. It's body language. It's like, you have to make sure you're like showing confidence. You may not be, you know, you may not be confident, but like, I'm gonna fucking stand up straight. I'm not gonna be slouched in the corner thinking that you're gonna like take advantage of me. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do it. (laughs) So it's all like encompassing and like people can really sense. You may think that they, they don't sense that type of stuff, but like it's, it's like on a subconscious level. Like, like people pick out, like people who are bullies, they pick out who to bully. Like they, they, there's a reason why certain people get bullied and certain people don't, don't get bullied. Right. Yeah. So like there are a lot of issues that get definitely magnified and take, like taken advantage of when you're on set. I feel like For me, mine was like my bad attitude and anger, like 100%. Like 
my temper was so bad and I had to do a lot of inner work to get that like tamed for so many years. It really, ugh, it really like takes a lot to like know yourself. And if anyone's like, how do I get to know myself? Write, take a journal and just literally write. For me, my clarity comes from when I write in my journal and I just write three pages. I force myself to at least write three pages, not every day, but I try to make it like a, a more than a once a week habit. Like I try to do it, like if, if I am off from a job, I definitely will write like every day or every other day. But I try to make time to like write a half an hour because if you are writing and you just write whatever's in your head, it's not like writing, because there's writing for like, for someone else to read. But if you're writing for yourself and you're just really putting your stream of consciousness on the page, clarity comes from that. It, for some reason, my head gets very, very clear and I can figure out like, why does this bother me? Why am I having the feelings that I'm feeling? Why am I angry at this? What is the underlying feeling around this? And it really gets, gets to know like, you get to know yourself and like why certain things affect you the way you, because if you're just writing it out, you have like, it's, it's, different than you're just thinking about it. And if something is like really bothering me and I can't stop thinking about it, that's when I really need to write because then I could just let it go on the paper and like my anxiety just goes like, whew, it goes down. So if anyone has high anxiety, like writing three, getting a journal, like literally all these journals behind me, like these right here, <laughs> those are like my journals like throughout my life. Like I keep them and I look back on like where I was mentally and where I was emotionally with certain things and how I dealt with certain relationships or with certain scenarios and stuff like that. Like writing is, keeps me so focused and keeps me grounded on who I am and like what I stand for and like what I, you know, what, what I give grace to and like what my vulnerabilities are and why did I feel this way? And it, I think that a lot of the times we don't really pay attention to our emotions because we're like, we have to work. We have to like, we're worried about surviving sometimes. And I know that coming up in poverty, like I know, like thinking about your emotions is not really your high priority when you're like, I got to pay rent. <laughs> I have to, you know, make sure I'm fed. Like there was a moment where I was almost homeless after Sandy. I was almost homeless, but my landlord, by the grace of God, was like, we'll, we'll keep you here. Don't worry. Like, you know, you'll, you'll just, just back pay the rent. I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Like I've always been homeless and I've always eating like rice every day, not really eating vegetables. <laughs> like I've been there where you're in survivor mode and you're like, it, you just don't have time to really think about emotions and like, how am I feeling about this? We're just like, oh my God, I have to work and I have to get to work and I have to make sure I'm paying these stupid fucking bills where you're like just really just struggling in life. I get it. I have been there 100%. But if you do have anxiety, like what, like definitely it does help me get clear mentally, especially if like, if I was, and I, I haven't really been angry in a long, long time, but there was an instance, the end of September, the DP like yelled at me and I was so pissed. I was, I mean, and, and it was, I got so mad. I gave, I gave it right back to him. And my first idea was like, Amber, you lost it. And I was like, you damn right. I fucking lost it. <laughs> Cause I'm not going to have some fucking grown ass man yell at me. Like I'm some little girl. I'm sorry. I am not doing it. <laughs> But she still appreciates me. She thought I was, I did a good job outside of that one little, one little thing where I lost my temper. I'm like, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to take that, you know, but she knows that. So like, that's why we keep working together. I still regret not standing up for myself when my former boss screamed at me. I felt like I had to go through that in order to never deal or tolerate that behavior. I would say yes. Right. Like, so I would, uh, Shannon, I would say, do not regret that from like that situation because we're gonna go through a lot of shit, a lot of hard stuff in our lives, and we have to go through that adversary, adversity to like really pinpoint what we can and cannot do and what we will and will not tolerate as well, right? And what we can learn from those scenarios. So like the hard shit, we need that. We need that difficult stuff, and that is t so right. Like you felt like you had to go through that in order to like never deal with it. It's like also like you can spot it, right? Because sometimes people are like, oh, well, if that happened to me, I would do this. But if it's never happened to you, you don't know how you're going to react in that scenario, right? So I think that's super important. That's like really reflective for you to like really like dig deep and you're like, you know what? I think that was useful or I think that was what I needed to go through at that time. Well, for anyone who's watching this, if you are in survivor, survival mode, and you are like struggling, it does not last forever. 
you will get to where you want to get and I wish the best for everyone like whatever dreams and goals you guys have like I just know that I'm rooting for all you guys because there is enough space there's enough space for all of us to succeed in all the things and people are like yeah but film is like really competitive Film is really competitive, but so is every other industry in the world. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. And someone's got to succeed. It might as well be you. And everyone has different goals, so it doesn't matter. Like, like I have a different route. People who are trying to be, you know, assistant directors, they all had different ways of coming up, and they all have different goals for, where, like, whatever's coming after we're AD. Ever been to the Rage Cage in New York, Amber? It can be very cathartic. Funny you say that, Obi-Wan Martin, because I have. And the reason why I have is because... On The Equalizer, the first season was tough. It was so tough. And me and the other first team PAs and our base camp AD, the four of us, went to the rage cage. It was the best thing ever. I had a real good time breaking those dishes and smashing TVs and like breaking printers and having a baseball bat and beating the shit <laughs> of like so many things. Like, so... The, like this is definitely something I have done. It was quite wonderful. I will say that. So thanks for bringing that up. But what I want to want to just re like reiterate is like set your boundaries, know who you are, know what you want to do, and just make sure you respect yourself. You have integrity, and you just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to walk away, because. I feel like some people feel like they just have to stay in a horrible situation. Fucking walk away. Respect yourself enough. Keep your integrity intact and just walk away. Nothing. It's like not worth it. If you think about it, it's really, really not worth it. There are some, there are some things where you're like, okay, this is challenging. I may not like certain things. I may not like how it, this might be going down where the, you do want to meet the challenge and you do want to meet that adversity and you want to go through a tough time because maybe there is that like where for me, I have a hard time quitting where like I will find use in certain things and certain bosses who are like hard on me or they, they you know, but being challenging me as a person is different than disrespecting me. And I think there is definitely a difference that some people like to say is kind of like one and the same, which is not. Challenge me, like, you know, some people will experience certain humiliation or embarrassment and be like, oh, well, I was embarrassed, so like I have to, well, I'm sorry, like maybe you are just embarrassed because like you might have said something and, and like me, like uh, people who are learning a new language. They don't learn new language because they're embarrassed how everyone laughs when they say certain words in different languages and it sounds funny, right? Me, myself included. And I'm always like very subconscious about something. I'm like, everyone's laughing at me. But also like, who cares? If you're able to laugh at yourself, like, like it's not that big a deal, right? So it's all about like knowing yourself is like number one for figuring out what your boundaries are and what you tolerate. But honestly, safety, there is no like, there is no bending the rules for that. Safety is like 100%. Like I will tell my PAs that like there are certain times where you shouldn't say something <clears throat> when it comes to safety, always say something. And if someone's being out, like just no, I don't, no reason disrespecting you, just, just being mean and nasty to you, say something or even like write it out or something. You got to figure out a way to either get through it, which is like shitty, or at least call that person out. Because what I will say is this people who are dealing with bullies, because bullies, it does not stop. It doesn't stop when you're in high school or like when you're in grammar school. You have bullies throughout your life because bullies in school grow up to be adult bullies, <laughs> right? <laughs> so like that stuff doesn't stop. Bullies look for like when you call out a bully, they are less likely to bully you because you know you're not one to be fucked with. You're like, I'm sorry, no. So calling them out, I'm, don't be afraid of competition. Everyone's, there are a lot of people who are definitely afraid of competition, like 100%. I get it. I get it, but you cannot be afraid of competition. <sighs> Go out and like have a screaming match with someone, guys. Definitely, just do it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, don't do that. <laughs> I am wrapping this up. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. I appreciate you guys commenting and joining me on this live stream. I really appreciate it. Give me a comment, send me an email if you guys have any questions. I'm always happy to answer. I'm here to support you guys in your film career.